Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I'd like to discuss one of the longest running debates since the inception of personalized CNC, and that is what motor best suits your CNC application. Do we go with a hybrid stepper, or do we go with one of the newer servos like a ClearPath, or even one of the older type servos that are on the market? Um, I've elaborated on this many times before. Um, I've even done a spreadsheet comparison uh, between a hybrid stepper and actual clear path servos to give you a breakdown on cost, what you can expect, basic speed differentials and whatnot. And this weekend I found a video uh, that actually caught my attention and it was posted by a U.S. CNC manufacturer named Tormach. Many of you are aware of them. Um, the name of the video is, is it a good idea to upgrade to servos? So of course it caught my interest. I said I want to watch the video. I watched it. And I noticed in the beginning part of the video, this segment right here, there's some missing information. And what's really interesting is on the back end of the video, there is probably the biggest answer that I've discussed at least a million times since I've gotten involved in the industry um, to potential clients, past clients, and that is, is a stepper-based system as accurate as a servo-based system? We'll cover that. What I want to do is just give you a brief introduction of what you're going to see right here. On side A, you've got 110 inch per minute uh, actual uh, feed rate being run on one of their stepper-based systems. And now they've just come out with ClearPath servos as an option to retrofit one of their stepper-based systems. And it's running on side B. And, of course, they're running it at 300 inches a minute. So I'm going to just play this. It's pretty much self-explanatory. And we'll discuss it, what's actually missing in this segment of the video rectangular pocket geometry that we need to machine. This kind of geometry is going to produce a lot of rapid motions. This is where you're really going to see the benefit from the higher axis speeds. As you can see in this cutting footage, we save 22% cycle time by just changing the rapid speeds on this part. That's a substantial improvement that's really going to save you some time and some money on every job that you process. Okay. So we've seen a 22% cycle time um, decrease just by going from the clear path from the actual stepper. Um, again, this is not 100% accurate in the sense that a servo is only faster than a stepper if the engineering hasn't changed on the machine or the type of motor being used. Let me explain. Steppers can actually be run at a higher torque and when they're run at a higher torque steppers as we all know and I've disclosed this many times is that steppers as they run faster they deplete the amount of torque that they produce now knowing that they deplete the amount of torque that they produce in order to increase the speed that we want our machines to perform at all we have to do is build a buffer inside of that torque. So if we take, let's say if they're motors, and I did some uh, research to see exactly what's the size of their motors, and it's interesting because their steppers are typically, and this is interesting too, you can see here part number 30199 is 640 ounce inches. Um, and this is a NEMA 34, and they want $313 for it. Now, guys, we all know their pricing is absolutely ridiculous. You can see their website right here. Um, I, just to give you an idea of how ridiculous it is, I offer a 600-ounce NEMA 24, which is in the same exact mounting chassis platform as a 23, except the chassis is slightly longer, and it's $62. Okay, what are you paying for? We're paying for this. Okay, but overall... If we went from, let's say, now again, I don't know the exact torque that that stepper is. They never disclose what they're using, and that's why I said there's missing information here. If you take and double the torque of this motor, and let's say we go to the 1,200 ounce inch rating, we have such an abundance of torque available that even if we bleed that torque down by accelerating the motor, as long as it's matched with the proper power supply, you will get that system to run faster. That's the key to running a stepper-based system faster. But now that we've solved that problem, or I've given you the option to solve that problem, what else can you do? I mean, that's as far as just the motor aspect. But if we want speed, we can get speed in another way as well. We could change our transmission, okay? Their machines run on ball screws. I recommend all you guys that if you can afford it, the ball screw transmission is the most accurate and, again, uh, going to require the least amount of maintenance. Ball screws you can actually select the um, the lead pitch, which is just the spacing between the threads, if you go from a 5 millimeter pitch to a 10 millimeter pitch, you're going to have a faster machine. 
Why is that? Because then the spacing between the threads is greater. So every rotation increases the length faster of that ball nut. So keep that in mind. It's a combination of parts is what I'm trying to say. There's variables. We'll cover that again. You're going to hear it out of their own mouth on the se second half of this when they discuss um, something I've been saying and giving you the answer to that age-old question, which again seems to be the uh, consensus online to all these gurus on these CNC forums, and that is that a servo is so superior to a stepper, which just isn't the case. So let's come over to the second half. And this is interesting, so please listen closely, guys. One common misconception of servos is that they're going to improve the accuracy of the machine. This is unfortunately not an accurate statement. Overall machine accuracy encompasses the entire machine and how it was installed, not just the axis motors. It is a stack up of tolerances from the base casting all the way to the part in your vise. And since the step resolution on a stepper-based system and the servos are the same at one-tenth of a thousandth, the accurate machine isn't really going to be affected. Okay. I think that says it all right there. I mean, but why? Why would they, of course, and I get asked this question all the time, why would they, of course, not disclose that or make it more to the end user to research to find this information out? I'm going to show you why. Here is the cost of their ClearPath servo upgrade. Now, of course, they're calling it their own motors. I've discussed how the proprietary division when it comes to manufacturing works, and you can see here, I don't know what this piece of tape is, but if you guys do a Google search on ClearPath, you're going to see that this image is exactly the same. Um, those are very high quality motors, believe me, they are. Uh, is this worth a $2,000 upgrade now knowing that the two systems are identical in accuracy? Well, let's think about in terms of speed. He showed you about a 20% differential in speed. Is that three minute differential worth the $2,000? Well, it is if you look exponentially over duration, but when you think in terms of actually being able to change out just the stepper motors on the two axis and just going with a higher torque stepper to increase the speed of the machine or you changing even the transmission to do it and use the stock motors, usually you're going to be under this cost, which I think is ridiculous. And when you factor this cost in with over here the ECM update that they're asking you uh, basically to add 625 and they'll include a 425 re refundable deposit unless you have it already, this is the hidden information I want you guys to know. Because, again, if you're starting a business, the worst thing you could do is spend more than you have to because of the Joneses, so to speak, the neighbors who supposedly have everything better than you. And, of course, with the mass amount of information online, and unfortunately when it comes to CNC information, is a lot of mass of misinformation. And I've tried to cover this in every video. This is one of the best explanations to see, especially when we break down that a general stepper that's 640 ounce inches because it's labeled a Tormach is 313 bucks or 312. I mean, when you factor that in and you can buy it from me for $62, I get asked all the time, is it different? Does it rotate? It's the same motor, guys. It's the same motors. It may be different colors. The wires may be different colors. It's the same motor. There's no difference. So again, Know where to spend your money. I cannot emphasize that enough. When these guys that I speak to with full commercial shops and say, you know, 2000 is not bad for the upgrade if I'm going to save that kind of time. I have yet, I have yet to speak to any client of mine in the last seven years or the last 15 years, uh, unless they're running conveyor belts. Now, a conveyor belt may be different, but for general production, Time is not usually acclimated to how fast a machine can run to get the work done. Budgeting your time for your business never seems to come into play to where, oh God, oh God, I stopped, you know, I started machining this project too late for it to be completed because I'm not running up to the machine spec, so to speak. That's not something that's always a variable. Typically what it is, is money. How much do you want to spend to get the job done? And I've said this in numerous videos, and the first thing I always tell you, Get a guy, get him, go to a machine shop, have him cut a part. You cut the same part. If the tolerance is the same, I don't care what you're running. If the tolerance is the same and you did it for less than him, you just beat his ass. It's that simple. It's that simple. There is no such thing as a thousandth or two thousandths, whatever the tolerance may be. If the, it, Whatever that measurement is, it's the same. There's nothing different. Don't pay more than you have to. 
educate yourselves, do your due diligence. And again, I hope that this video has helped many of you because again, I know many guys are out there going back and forth and I mean, they stay up at night. I feel like you guys stay up at night, some of you going back and forth. Should I do this? Should I do that? And like I said, for the guys that are starting a business, every dollar counts. Start with the basics, worry about your transmission, worry about the accuracy, the build of the mechanics, and then diversify by figuring out the controller, what we're going to do with that. And then we go from there and put the whole unit together. And when we build the robot, it's the, it's the symmetry of everything. Okay. If you don't have that, that every complete component and variable has been covered, you're going to find that it's always the weakest link to get you. You know, I've seen guys go through, you know, meticulously going through the entire chassis and then use plastic motor couplers or go through the entire chassis and, you know, I'm going to use belt drive on my Z axis. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Details count. Okay, I don't care if you have a question, that's what you ask a question about. That's where you spend your money is where the where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck. The, a motor is not going to do it, guys. Okay, and if speed is that important, if you need to change the speed, once again, we can do that with either a higher torque stepper so that we can bleed the torque off as we accelerate. We can also increase voltage going to the stepper, meaning increase the amount of voltage from the power supply going into it, once again, using overdrive ratio. You guys can check out overdrive ratio on Gecko's site. Um, again, stepper motors are usually rated to very, very low voltage. It's usually like four or five volts. We never run steppers at that. We run them in an overdrive ratio, which simply means we're using a higher amount of voltage than they're rated to. The higher the voltage, the better the resolution, the better the stepper motor performs, but there's a limit. Voltage and speed equals heat. We have to dissipate heat. So overdrive ratio is typically best used at about a, uh, a 20 over perspective, meaning that you could go, if the motor's rated at, let's say, 4 volts, you're safe at up to 80. I don't recommend running 80. I That's why I built the 72-volt power supply, because we have that slight buffer. Again, different voltage spikes, you stay within the range, and you still get the maximum motor performance. Again, it's all about engineering. When in doubt, ask. Don't be, uh, you know, again, trusting everything you see online, because unfortunately, in this field, Manufacturing, it's, it is about making money, and a lot of these companies are not disclosing all information. And again, I've defined that here. And again, just be careful. If you're in doubt, ask questions. I hope the video has been helpful. I'm going to definitely put a link to this uh, video. Once again, it's, it's called, Is It a Good Idea to Upgrade to Servos? I'll put that link in the description of this video so you guys can review it all yourself. And again, I hope it's answered everything. If you still are on the fence, Contact a stepper motor manufacturer. I don't care who it is. Lynn Engineering, there's, there's, they're all over the place. You can contact them and ask them. I mean, a lot of them, even Lead Shine, they're going to tell you, hey, guess what? Uh, they sell both steppers and servos. If you ask them which is more accurate, they're going to tell you the truth, guys. I mean, they have nothing to gain by lying. Eventually, you're going to find out. So, I mean, it is what it is. Again, keep it fully transparent. Find out as much information as possible. The only way you're going to learn is to ask. And we know that, okay? And I know that. I mean, they hopefully know that, but I definitely know that. So again, I hope the video has been helpful. Um, if you guys need to contact me, once again, my contact information is storm2313 at gmail.com. Um, if you don't want to contact me directly there, you can always contact me through eDealers Direct. If I don't answer you right away on Storm's uh, email, you can definitely go there, and typically I'll get that message uh, very quickly, and we can discuss whatever you want. Um, Keep in mind to my subscribers, I, I do apologize if you've seen me cover this topic numerous times. Like I said, many of my past clients already realize I've covered this. Um, but again, I've, for the masses out there that are just getting involved with CNC, <clears throat> excuse me, this is imperative to know because I know how much money uh, you'll end up saving. I mean, I can't emphasize that enough. So again, I hope it's been helpful. Take care, guys. Thank you.